Hi everyone, my name is Tabitha Ishman and I'm the Marketing Manager at Excalibur Data Systems. And I wanna thank you all for joining us for the webinar today. We are going to be diving into a knowledge management playbook for ShareWell, CSM, getting from zero to success the easy way. Brought to you from Excalibur Data Systems and our partner, Comaround. Comaround is a global leader in the knowledge management space whose software seamlessly integrates into ShareWell and us as a boutique integrator of ITSM and Enterprise Service Management Solutions are proud to be a partner of both ShareWell and Comaround. So just a few things before we go ahead and get started. I'm gonna have Brunt switch to the next slide. Brent, can you switch to the next slide? Uh, yes, I he, did. he did. Yeah. Must, is it showing? Yep, it's showing. Okay, oh. um, okay yes. So this is going to be a live webinar today, and it is being recorded, and the follow-up emails afterwards will be sent with the recording attached. Your lines have been muted, and the questions will be answered after the presentation, but you can go ahead and submit your questions in the chat window below. So for the ShareWell conference recap, I'd like to introduce senior solution architect consultant and owner of Excalibur Data Systems, Mike Fuson. Hi everyone, uh, glad you were able to join us today. It'll be exciting and fun. It's always fun talking about knowledge management um, and calm around. Uh, so uh, what Tabitha and, and Brent had asked me to talk about a little bit was kind of a recap of uh, the CLEAR conference, uh, which was uh, just a few weeks ago. So we have some fun pictures um, to share with everyone. Uh, we were uh, fortunate, uh, along with Comround, to have booths um, at uh, this year's conference. Uh, and be able to meet and greet and kind of see everyone as they attended. Uh, Excalibur also hosted a special event uh, on Tuesday evening uh, at Dave and Buster's, uh, kind of behind the, the hotel in the mall. Uh, and we had a lot of uh, customers, friends, uh, uh, and acquaintances join us. Uh, we had some, some nice Tennessee barbecue uh, and everybody got to play games. We I don't see the picture here of uh, some of the folks in tears because they finally got the big claw grabber machine to grab the toy that they wanted uh, but it was a, it was a lot of fun um, and of course the clear conferences are always a blast there's so much to learn uh, this picture on the left hand side uh, my little bald head is over there on the right hand uh, left hand side for far far right uh, of the uh, of the the wonderful people that were part of a great panel led by Bill Poley from uh, Com around uh, and talking a little bit about knowledge management we uh, the, the panel uh, which included uh, uh, some of us that are that are in the industry um, as well as a, a number of Com around's customers we had a great uh, discussion uh, with the attendees um, talking about uh, what not only Com around can do but what knowledge can do for you um, as an organization. Uh, Bill had some uh, interactive poll questions um, while the presentation was uh, going on uh, and it was kind of interesting to kind of see uh, where everybody is and, and knowledge and really the understanding that knowledge is power. Uh, and so we had a, we had a great time uh, and, and a lot of great discussion. So we look forward to seeing many of you. Clear 2020 has already been announced. Um, it is October 12th through the 15th uh, in Aurora, Colorado uh, at the uh, Gaylord Resort uh, in Aurora, uh, which is in Denver, technically, uh, um, right near um, Denver International Airport. So it'll be a nice, uh, easy place to get into and out of next year. Uh, and we're really looking forward to uh, seeing all of you there. Thank you, everyone. So yeah, and, and oh, I, for, I forgot one of the... The, the, the coolest events, we had a chance. Uh, the, the, the big event uh, at the conference this year was to visit the Wild Horse Saloon uh, in downtown Nashville. Uh, we, they had a live band um, who did everything from country to, for those of us that are old enough to remember, uh, one of one of the highlights for me was I wasn't paying much attention to what was going on until I heard the guitar riff from Sweet Child of Mine. And then that made me look and see what the band was doing. Um, Tabitha, of course, had no idea what I was talking about when I brought it up. 
um, but I, I'm sure she'll Google it. But it was a lot of fun. Uh, as you see, there's a whole bunch of folks out there. Um, they taught line dancing. Uh, so uh, what I found out is that if there are more than about four steps, um, I'm gonna end up face planting into the floor. Uh, but I got out there and, and uh, uh, line danced with everyone. Uh, everyone had a great time. It was a lot of fun. Um, and many folks explored downtown Nashville afterwards because there's just so much going on in downtown Nashville. Uh, so it was an absolutely uh, fantastic and fabulous event. And we're looking forward to seeing what they come up with for the 2020 clear in Aurora. I'm imagining it might be something in downtown Denver perhaps. But we shall see. So we hope to see you all there. What I, who I'd like to introduce is our featured presenter, um, Brent Kellogg. Um, Brent is the Director of Sales and Business Development in North America for Comaround. An interesting fact that I learned about Brent um, at the conference is Brent is an avid interpretive ice climber. I'll let you guys <laughs> chew on that. Uh, while, while Brent kicks us off and we get to talk about the, the, the fun, uh, gooey goodness that is Comaround. <laughs> well, thanks so much. Thanks so much, Mike, for the introduction there. And uh, I'll, uh, I'll spare everybody the details of my uh, in, uh, interpretive ice climbing uh, career, but uh, I just want to thank everyone uh, for joining today. Um, I think we've got some good uh, topics to, to cover in terms of come around, uh, the map integration we have with ShareWell, and really some, some best practices on uh, you know, really putting together a ShareWell playbook for knowledge management. Um, a little bit on me, uh, I've been in the knowledge management space, boy, going back to 1998. So that's gonna be, what, 21 years. So I've seen a lot of it. Um, on the uh, MSP side, I've been in consulting and knowledge management and on the customer service side of knowledge management, uh, as well as ITSM and Service Desk. I've really seen uh, this from a lot of different angles over all those years, uh, in, you know, in terms of process uh, and in terms of technology uh, that's available for self-service uh, and for agents. Um, I thought we'd start out really just with a very brief, very quick uh, overview of Comround to set a baseline, uh, let everybody know, you know, who we are, how we kind of fit into the mix here. Uh, we're a knowledge management uh, software company. We've uh, been in business for over 20 years, so we're definitely not new uh, to this space. Uh, and we're actually the largest independent KCS verified CAM platform globally. Uh, we're KCS V6 verified. I think we were the second globally to achieve that, uh, that designation, which we're very proud of. Uh, we have a large presence uh, in Europe, a growing presence uh, here in uh, North America uh, with a few of our clients here uh, as shown on the screen. We're very proud as well uh, to have a long relationship with ShareWell. Uh, we're not new in terms of the map integration we have. Uh, with ShareWell, it's uh, quite mature. We're actually on our third version. Uh, it's called the uh, MAP 3.0 is what we're uh, kind of labeling it. Uh, it's integrated into the agent side of, of ShareWell, uh, as well as the portal for end users, for self-service users, which we'll be looking at some of that functionality uh, as part of our presentation today. And we also are offering to ShareWell users um, the, our article pack. So we author and maintain knowledge bases for many enterprise applications. So Windows 10 and Office 365 and Android and Adobe products, there's quite a, a inventory of those articles that we bring free of charge uh, to uh, ShareWell users who integrate with us via the map. Uh, it's a great value for ShareWell customers there. Won't be focusing a ton on that, but just something I wanted to call out uh, as part of our integration with ShareWell. So to jump in to kind of the core here of our, uh, of our webinar, I thought we'd present this question, which is really why is knowledge management relevant to service desk you know operations what is it why do you do it why do you deploy it what's the value uh, that it provides or offers uh, to service desks and i just noted a few here uh, one you know knowledge management really enables efficiency 
uh, and consistency, right? If you can curate that information, make it available to your stakeholders, both your agents and your employees for self-service, they're able to get those questions answered more quickly and they're able to do that using proven steps, which is consistency as documented uh, you know, in the knowledge base content. You know, number two, really, it amplifies employee capacity and capability, right? Folks that were uh, unable to answer questions previously are now empowered to uh, do so by leveraging knowledge-based content. So it's that sharing of information and the ability to empower others to answer questions when they didn't previously have the expertise to do that. It reduces time to value for new agents. And this is uh, really true, a great example. Uh, we have several university uh, clients uh, using ShareWell. And uh, they have service desk agents that are students. Uh, the students, they come in, it's kind of on a rotating basis. They don't have a lot of background uh, uh, serving as an agent. And by leveraging that knowledge base, it really does reduce the time required for them to provide value and answer those questions and to provide support on quite a wide range of questions. So that's a, a big value add uh, to uh, implement and utilize knowledge within your service desk operations there. And of course, a big one, it reduces the cost, right? Uh, it costs less money when you can answer these questions more quickly and when you can answer it at lower cost of support delivery. And really, this kind of dovetails in or leads into a, a core value proposition of knowledge management and certainly a main value proposition uh, of Comaround. And that's this concept of shifting left, right? It's taking knowledge-based content to lower uh, the cost of delivery by moving volumes down the cost chain. So what was a level two support incident, you know, previously now can be done at level one and level one issues can ultimately, in many cases, be moved down to level zero, level zero being self-service support. And each time you make that shift down the cost chain, you're not only saving time in terms of how long it takes for the requester to get that information and to be able to move on with their job and move on with uh, productive tasks for the company, but you're also lowering the cost of delivering that. So the cost goes down, the question, the person asking the question gets back to their work more quickly, um, all by leveraging knowledge in this kind of a shift left uh, paradigm. And, you know, from a cost uh, perspective, here's some numbers. Uh, these are by uh, MetricNet from 2000. And uh, 17, you know, I'm sure everyone will say, well, those don't match with our numbers. And, you know, these numbers will be, of course, all over the place uh, for different organizations. But, you know, the theme here clearly is level three costs a lot more than level two. Uh, desktop support less, level one, $22 here. You know, I've heard metrics uh, as low as $15 and as high as 30 uh, for a level one incident. Uh, and then there's the little blue section down there in the bottom right, which is level zero. So level zero uh, in the context of ShareWell is self-service uh, support, you know, being provided through the portal. A, a employee coming in, searching for the information, they find it, solve their problem using the knowledge base. And there's not enough space down there to put the number, but uh, you know the numbers from MetricNet are two dollars, right? And I've heard it as low as one dollar uh, for self-service support. So you know the efficiencies through this shift left are huge, right? And so the opportunity for knowledge management uh, is 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 big, but then the question comes, but but why do knowledge management initiatives, you know, often fail to deliver? You know, we see this all the time. And in talking to people, some enterprises and some companies are doing great with knowledge management. They're seeing the benefit. They're they're getting those deflections. They're getting the shift left to occur. But for many, they just aren't seeing uh, these kinds of efficiencies materialize. And you know, what are the reasons why why they're uh, struggling? What are the reasons why they're failing to achieve uh, the business benefit of knowledge management in terms of ITSM? And there's a few candidates here. There's you know, there's going to be many more than this, but here are just a few. They have immature KM processes. So some firms use something more formal. 
uh, like KCS. You know, others are using uh, less formal processes. Some just aren't using any at all, but that lack of process to kind of govern the curation and measurement and management of the knowledge base definitely plays a role uh, in you know, the ROI and achieving ultimate benefit there. Lack of executive support. I mean, this isn't is, isn't uh, uh, just for knowledge management or service desk, but it's across all parts of the enterprise. If if there isn't executive support, uh, it's harder to get traction and stickiness and momentum within any initiative. Misaligned KPIs. So uh, are agents being measured in a way that aligns with their participation in using knowledge, in creating it and refining it? You know, they're going to, agents are going to act upon those things that they're being measured. And if they're being measured in a way that doesn't motivate them or encourage them to participate in the knowledge base, use the knowledge base and improve it, right, uh, you're not going to have the level of adoption that you are looking for. And then poor knowledge culture, it's this whole idea of shifting from subject matter experts that guard their, their subject matter expertise, they enjoy being the person that others come to, to ask questions, uh, to being measured by sharing. How much information do I share and make it available to others and empower others and I'm measured on, on the actions that I take to, to do that sharing. And then, of course, wrong technology. If you don't have the right, uh, you know, technical capabilities, it certainly is going to have a huge impact on your ability to, uh, you know, get the uh, a level of adoption and the efficiencies that you're looking for. And you know, it's true. All of these candidates, and there could be many others that we could go through. All of those candidates matter. Uh, but over the years, you know, uh, having been in this space and worked with so many different companies, I think there are some critical underpinnings. There are a few things that really need to be addressed uh, in order to even get out the gate and start to achieve uh, you know, the types of adoption you're looking for. Um, because at the end of the day, it's about adoption. You have to present um, uh, technology and an environment where there's a choice by your agents to use it. There's a choice by your employees in terms of self-service to engage and try and trust the self-service environment uh, and, and adopt it, adopt it long term. And this whole idea, I think, of adoption can boil down to one kind of underlying theme, and that's ease of use. Um, you know, if a if a technology is um, hard to use, adoption will stall. And here's a, here's a great kind of a line: adoption stalls when knowledge management is perceived as hard to use and adding a layer of inefficiency. Right? Uh, if if it gets in the way, uh, your your employees are just going to resist embracing it and using it and making the cultural shift to incorporate it into how they do business day to day. And there's an interesting quote here. This this quote was from the Service Desk uh, Institute 2019 report, and it's. ITS, ITSM tool usability uh, was a number one reported frustration among all recipients or all respondents for this report. Uh, so usability clearly is a, is a key component uh, when it comes to what is causing frustration by the folks that are actually using an ITSM platform. So if we dig a little bit deeper, if we take a little bit deeper look at ease of use issues, what kind of things you know, are we talking about here? Uh, I think near the top of the list is authoring is cumbersome and slow. Um, I've worked with a lot of different technologies over the years, and this is one that is very, very common. When you have your knowledge workers or your authors uh, in there trying to create content, it's difficult and slow and cumbersome. It's hard. Uh, there may be a lot of bells and whistles and levers and capabilities, but it's they they're hard to use. And what that translates into is a resistance to actively create and edit and improve the content. And it also translates into uh, poor quality content being created, and that dovetails into something we'll talk about later, which is consumability. Um, the next item here, it's very difficult and time consuming to locate. So even if you do have the right 
subject matter in the system uh, and it's accurate, if your end users, both on the agent side and if your users on the self-service side, uh, have a hard time efficiently locating that information to solve the problem uh, at hand, uh, they're going to resist, they're going to abandon, they're not going to trust the knowledge base, and they're going to make a call or submit a ticket uh, and not utilize it, and that translates back into, you know, low adoption. Another piece here is the consumability aspect of it. And so, you know, one, the content has to exist, two, the knowledge um, has to be findable. Uh, the next piece is understandable and consumable, presented in a way where the steps can efficiently be worked through uh, and you can solve your own problem. You can consume that information easily. It's like, it's it's hard to read a very complex, like scientific book or something, a textbook, um, but if that same information is presented in an easy to understand way, that knowledge transfer is gonna be much more effective. It's something similar here. And then lastly is, uh, you know, the usage data. Uh, this is something that is quite lacking in a lot of knowledge management platforms, the capture of usage and the ability to report on that, to have visibility into how that knowledge is being used that can feed an optimization uh, cycle to improve that content over time. So if we take a look at uh, then knowledge management adoption and success, kind of boiling this down to what are the three components? What are three things, and this isn't a comprehensive you know, list, there's more than three, but what are three very key things to focus in on to help achieve that adoption and that trust uh, to get the ball rolling uh, within your uh, knowledge management operations? And I see them as findability, consumability, and ease of, of curation. They're kind of a triad, the three pillars uh, that need to be addressed for anything else to really succeed. If you don't have these three, all the business process in the world is not going to uh, help you get uh, adoption, as an example. So in terms of findability, it often really translates uh, you know, into search. Uh, there are other ways to locate. You can, you know, uh, you can go through a taxonomy and folder structure and those things. But anymore, you know, in this day and age, it really boils down to search, and it needs to be very accurate. It needs to be natural language and self-learning, and it definitely needs to understand intent, right? Uh, what is the intent of that string of words and the ability to forgive spelling? Uh, if, the, if the search engine is uh, not accurate and not forgiving uh, and people are not able to find what they're looking for, they're going to abandon. Any more people are so used to the power of good search through Google, as an example, they have high expectations and they want that kind of experience, you know, really to be emulated uh, within a knowledge base that they have at work or through, you know, B2C customer support or anywhere else. This next item is that consumability that we talked about. And so uh, this is especially true on the self-service side. I think it applies to agents as well, but, but for sure on self-service. And there's a couple of gates that happen when somebody uh, successfully finds a relevant article. The next gate they go through is the decision to engage. They look at the content and they make a decision as to whether it looks like something that it will answer their question, is it, does it look easy to understand, does it look complete, do they feel as though if they work through this they're going to solve their problem. If they think it, it's poorly put together uh, and not very consumable, they'll abandon and they'll go look for the phone number or submit a ticket. Once they do engage, it's, it's working through it and having it be complete so that knowledge transfer actually occurs and they solve their problem increasing the trust they have in the knowledge base and setting up future behavior for them to come back and leverage knowledge when they have their next problem. And that third piece is the authoring. It's the ease of curation. If it is hard for your knowledge workers and your agents to author good content and to edit and optimize that content over time, they're not going to produce the right content and they're not going to produce consumable content. And this d definitely plugs in to UFA, use it, flag it, fix it, add it, which is a KCS terminology, which is kind of the life cycle, the process uh, for KCS operations of your agents using that content, 
flagging it uh, when it has a problem, fixing it when they see a, an issue with it, uh, and adding new content as new issues come into the service desk um, you know, based on an actual question being asked by your end user. And the ease of curation is going to go a long, long way to getting those folks to choose to do that, that uh, authoring and editing in real time as part of their job. So when you have those pieces come together, and, and augmented by solid data in terms of usage data, uh, sentiment uh, information, feedback being provided by the different stakeholder groups uh, that are using the knowledge base. You're then able to put together this feedback mechanism. So you're measuring what's going on, it's feeding back up to improve the content, improve the user experience, lower uh, the amount of effort being required to effectively use the knowledge base. And by extension, it kind of comes full circle to what we were talking about here. It's, it's shifting things left. So it's kind of dynamically shifting th things left because you've improved that information within the system. And so in terms of your self-service users as one primary stakeholder group and then your service desk agents as the other, when this all comes together, you start to put the basis in place for that KM adoption uh, that we're looking for. So again, the business process and all those other things are definitely important and definitely uh, part of a long-term strategy. But I think by focusing on these three things in the early stages, uh, you're really going to uh, get momentum in terms of adoption uh, for your knowledge management program. So the next piece, I think we'll take a, kind of go down into a bit more granularity on each of these in terms of the findability and then consumability and then the uh, ease of curation. So number one, findability, and this is aside from you know the a solid uh, search engine. It's it's breaking down knowledge silos, consolidating the right information into a single source of truth, into a single knowledge base that can be searched uh, and pro provide returns. Um, so you could have you know SharePoint, you could have wikis, you could have other knowledge bases or directories where this type of documentation and information currently resides. I mean, we see this, you know, just all the time. But a big, big one is that tribal knowledge and encouraging your agents and su subject matter experts, again, to share that knowledge, document it, and get it into the system so that it can be leveraged by other agents and ultimately down uh, to your self-service users. It's a huge one. Another piece uh, is that findability in terms of AI powered search. So the days of keyword search are just not going to meet customer expectations you know, anymore at all. You've got to provide an experience with you know, kind of an auto recommendation, sort of like we're seeing here uh, in this screen capture uh, on the left. Uh, you know, autocomplete, uh, spelling forgiveness, and all those types of things. If you, uh, if you don't emulate what's happening really in more of a Google-like uh, experience, uh, there's gonna, you're not going to meet the mark and there's going to be frustration. Uh, actually, within the uh, integration with ShareWell, uh, we're using an AI-powered search. It's uh, Azure Natural Language Search. Uh, it's augmented by Microsoft Cognitive Services, uh, as well as some algorithms that we've layered on top of that. And here's a great example. This is uh, a screenshot from inside of uh, ShareWell on the agent side. Uh, and you have a string there, which is accessing network Pringer in Sacramento office. There's a lot of spelling errors in there. And it presents through the Come Around integration a, a suggested search, which is accessing network printer in Sacramento office. So there is no synonym mapping that we've done in the background. We haven't done anything to, to manually make this uh, occur. It's all happening in the background just uh, through the strength of that natural language search engine uh, that we've uh, integrated in um, to share well. So in the next piece here, kind of uh, transitioning over into that consumability uh, portion. And there's just a couple of items, a lot of things you can do to enhance consumability of this information, but we'll touch on a couple here. Uh, one is auto-translation. 
And this is especially relevant uh, for global organizations, but becoming more relevant uh, even for uh, domestic organizations where you have employees that, uh, while they speak English and work in English, may be more uh, comfortable working through this type of documentation in their native language. Uh, through the integration, uh, every article uh, the end user can um, translate it on the fly into over 100 languages. So it's a little simple example of going you know, on here to the right, but just through a mere click, uh, the entire knowledge base article is localized in real time. I think we're up to about 110 languages now. Uh, and again, this is all part of the uh, integration uh, with ShareWell. And finally, on the consumability side, uh, you know, really incorporating video. I know personally, uh, when I am trying to answer a question or, or do something, the first place usually that I head is to YouTube. And I find a video, watch it, I can uh, understand what I need to do. And this quote here is just pretty revealing. It's uh, viewers retain 95% of a video's message uh, compared to 10% when reading text. And I think especially among younger um, you know, employees, they, they have a preference for a, a familiarity with uh, you know, consuming information via video. Uh, within the integration we have with ShareWell, uh, it, we have a very easy to use native video production tool. You can do screen capture and voiceover and picture in picture literally within just two or three clicks uh, and have that become part uh, of the knowledge base article. Uh, so really you can leverage this preference for uh, consuming information via video uh, very easily through this map integration. So next we'll move on to a couple of points here on ease of curation. So on the authoring side, your agents, your knowledge workers, how easy is it for them to create you know, media rich uh, knowledge base articles, add the annotations and, and other elements that are gonna contribute to consumability, right? In this example here, this little animation, we're bringing in an image. And so by just dragging an image in, resizing it, it's a, uh, very simple to add those kind of vi visual components. Very easy to add your alt text here, uh, links, uh, create an, a link from that uh, image and other things. Um, also the ability to drag and drop folders. So managing the taxonomy and folder structure uh, of your knowledge base is all done through drag and drop uh, via the uh, uh, integration we have with ShareWell uh, as well. So it just goes a long way at helping reduce the effort required for your knowledge workers to write good consumable um, knowledge base content. And the last one here on ease of curation is the word import. There, so many companies have Word documentation, legacy Word uh, docs. Uh, you know, it's it's typically very hard to get that kind of content into a knowledge base, and it usually requires uh, rewriting it. Uh, we've developed with Microsoft a utility uh, that will, with uh, one click, literally, take a knowledge base article and transform it into HTML, uh, where it can then be uh, edited. Uh, as a knowledge base article in the system. Uh, this utility can even take big manuals and import it and break them up into folders and articles that would reside in those subfolders. So a very powerful tool to bring that information in with very little effort, makes it very easy um, for those folks that have Word documentation uh, that they would like to include within the knowledge base. And uh, lastly here on uh, the ease of use or the ease, ease of curation is a duplicate checking. So you don't want to duplicate content, you don't want to overlap content. And so as a knowledge worker or agent is writing new information, adding a new article, uh, you know, putting into the system, they can quickly search for duplicates. It'll scan other articles in the knowledge base and stack rank them. Uh, based on probability of overlap or match. Uh, and so within just seconds, they can evaluate whether it makes more sense to improve an existing article, right? 
or to confirm that there isn't existing uh, information in the system, uh, which goes just a long, long way to keeping a knowledge base clean and not cluttered and not duplicative. So it's a great little feature that is part of the map integration with ShareWell. So to kind of come full circle, it's really about ease of use. And a, a quote here by Gartner, uh, make it easy and effortless experience is the key to customer loyalty. And this was actually done by CES prior to them being acquired by Gartner. Um, but and they're talking in this quote about customer uh, loyalty as far as uh, public customers, right? Uh, but I think it really applies here as well. It's if you can reduce the amount of effort required to do a task, your user base, uh, in this case employees, are gonna be much more prone to embrace its adoption uh, and to use it. Uh, Bill Polly here at Comround has a, has a great uh, tagline that he uses and it's, uh, if the technology can get out of the way and empower you to do your work, the probability of adoption goes up dramatically. And I think that kind of dovetails into to this quote here by Gartner uh, uh, very well. So in the next section, we're gonna take a look at a few self-service adoption secrets. So just a couple of things in terms of promoting adoption, specifically uh, on the self-service side, what are some things that over the years we have seen can play a real critical role in that socializing of the knowledge base, things that you can do to build trust and awareness in the knowledge base to help promote uh, long-term adoption uh, by your employees. And, and one of them certainly is ticket deflection. So there may be resistance for your employees, your end users to go in and search the knowledge base directly, but they're familiar with creating a ticket. And so here within the portal side of ShareWell, there, our user has gone in and they have a issue with network printer installation. We've layered in a knowledge base search uh, here, which is calling uh, to the knowledge base using our AI powered search. And, um, and then returning the results right inside of the portal interface. They can choose to review any of these articles. Uh, and if the article is successful in resolving uh, their ticket, it actually is shown here on the right, through the integration, we're generating a ticket ticket number, uh, we're showing that it was created and it was closed. So we have a ticket for tracking purposes and we've linked to the article that the end user used with the ticket. So we have that association between what was the question and what was the article that ultimately resolved it. As this is occurring and if that information is both findable and consumable, like we talked about earlier, it's a good low effort experience. You're promoting trust in the knowledge base and you're increasing the probability that when future questions come up, this employee's first stop is gonna be the knowledge base uh, to search there and try and resolve their own issue. Another one, and this is coming from the agent side of things. So when an agent uh, is in working a ticket uh, they find knowledge base content that resolves or will resolve uh, this topic is to forward the link back uh, to the person that asked the question for that link back directly. What this is doing is number one, you're, you're leveraging the consistency of that proven information. You know it's going to uh, walk them through the correct steps, but it also pro provides the opportunity to kind of advertise the availability of that self-service uh, in the messaging. So here in the email being sent, our agent is saying, the, here are your step-by-step -step instructions. Uh, this article and many others are available 24 hours a day in the self-service portal. Uh, again, uh, so if it's good information and consumable information and our end user succeeds in solving their own problem, you're kind of selling them on the advantages of using it on their own in the future rather than submitting a ticket uh, like they did here. And finally, decision trees. This is a new uh, feature set that we've just launched uh, that, and that can be deployed within the ShareWell uh, map integration uh, on the self-service side. So 
when you have more complex issues, your end user doesn't know quite what to be asking for, they can work through a decision tree that you can put together, walk them through criteria uh, that walks them down to a specific article or action that they would need to take to solve a given problem. So this is a great new feature that can, uh, can be deployed uh, and that can be very effective at helping uh, self-service users guide themselves to the right content uh, within the ShareWell portal. All right, and so our last section uh, here that we'll take a look at, there's just a couple kind of KM power plays. These are a couple of other things uh, that uh, you can consider doing uh, to help promote uh, a better knowledge uh, management program and better knowledge management results. And uh, you know, the first one here we term search harvesting. So it's this concept of searches are coming in. Um, some of them are going to be unsuccessful. Uh, they're, the user is not finding information. They're not uh, locating what the content that, that they desire. So it, it's, it's really a way, if you measure it, of defining unfulfilled demand. And it provides insight into knowledge gaps within the system. Within Comround, you can set up triggers so that when these unsuccessful searches occur X number of times, the number of times that, that you designate within the uh, what we call an alarm, uh, Come Around will create a draft article. It'll stick it into the workflow. So in real time, you're capturing the actual search query of your end user um, and using that as the starting point of a draft article, which can then be developed and put into the system uh, to fill that gap. So it's kind of an advanced move, I guess, but it's something that we've seen has been very effective to leverage those unsuccessful searches to uh, add uh, uh, content that's needed back into the knowledge base. And finally, uh, journey capture. So uh, this relates to on the self-service side, the portal side of ShareWell, an end user is in there, they're searching, they're viewing articles, they're looking for things but they ultimately submit a ticket. So if we can capture all of that activity that's occurred on the agent or on the self-service side, roll that into the ticket itself and enable the agent to get a summary of that, it, it uh, provides more information for, for that agent. They know what happened in self-service. They know what didn't work. They know what was searched for and what articles were viewed. And it sets them up to answer that question really with greater confidence and not recommending an article back to that end user that they may have already viewed, right? And so it's, it's, it's a feature that's been integrated and made available through the map. It's through this custom tab, their come around results, uh, which we think is a great addition to help your agents be more efficient and provide a better customer experience. So with that, uh, we're at the end of the main part of the webinar here. So just to kind of I think uh, wrap some of this up, uh, you know, achieving KM adoption by making it easy. And that is the, the, big, the big thing, easy equals adoption. By the powerful and forgiving search to save time and generate trust. The easy to use knowledge editor, editor to promote the good authoring habits which translates into consumable information being created. Video content, people love it. It's easy to add them, and so leverage video content to promote that adoption. That ticket deflection we looked at within the ticket submission sequence, the auto translation to provide uh, the ability to consume that information in the language of choice all automatically, and then all the wealth of data that, uh, that comes with this. We didn't really get into the data on the Comaround side, but, but we collect every click and view and visit and the amount of information that, that we aggregate uh, associated with usage is huge. We have a lot of very good in-product reports and also the ability uh, to plug in through what we call our Insight Connector, uh, where you can plug into the database directly, uh, utilize your own Tableau or Power BI, generate all the, the reports you want on your own, 
aggregate that usage data with other enterprise information. So from an analytics perspective, there's just a wealth of data to be used to understand what's going on uh, within your knowledge management environment. And then finally, uh, the article packs, the uh, tens of thousands of articles that we provide to share well customers free of charge to kind of jump state, jump start uh, your knowledge base for the Windows 10, Office 365, and many other uh, enterprise apps, all included uh, with subscription to the map and, and Comround uh, for share well customers. So that's what I had uh, for today, uh, Tabitha. Uh, happy to uh, answer any questions if any have come in yeah um, okay so we're gonna go ahead and I think a good segue would just to dive more into the reporting options that you do have um, I know that that was something you were just talking about we did have a question come in about their company being big on data and reporting and what are the reporting options that Comround offers yeah so <clears throat> we have uh, in product reports are all uh, driven by Power BI uh, they're all click to detail, so you can click within the UI of the reports to go deeper and deeper uh, into a narrower view of that data. Uh, they all have customizable date ranges, so you can select what date range uh, you want to, to view that data in. Uh, we have a basic set of reports on things like uh, views and, and searches and, and, and so forth. We also have a professional series of reports that we've just launched here recently that provides a lot more uh, visibility into authoring uh, the, of the content, uh, the knowledge states that the, the, that the content is in, in terms of authoring, kind of a, a knowledge worker dashboard, uh, as well as like geolocation. You can actually report on the different locations internationally or domestically of where support incidents are coming into. So uh, we'd be happy to provide anybody who's interested with a, a demo uh, of the map and the reporting. But then that third piece is what we call that insight connector. I touched on it. Uh, you know, it's the ability to plug in through OLAP cubes right into our database so you can build all the reports you want on your own. Uh, she's exciting new reporting capability that we just launched uh, over the summer. Okay, awesome. Um, the next question that we had come in was that their company already has knowledge base articles in ShareWell. So how do they get those migrated over to Comround? Yeah, this is uh, actually uh, Excalibur uh, has played a big role in doing some of this. Uh, and we've done this many times, even did it for ShareWell themselves. I don't know how many people uh, know, but ShareWell's uh, global support is now using Comaround and has it integrated into ShareWell. Uh, and they had a lot of knowledge base content within ShareWell. And so it's just was scripted into the Comaround uh, knowledge base. Um, and you know, pretty, pretty painless, uh, pretty clean. Uh, and that was done by uh, Mike Fusan and Jeff Jones and some of the guys on the Excalibur team. So Excalibur definitely has the expertise to very efficiently migrate that content in. Okay, and then the next question is that, um, what search engine does Comround use in the ShareWell integration and how is it different than the standard ShareWell search? Yeah, so the, the ShareWell search, the search that they have had, is really much more of a keyword search. Um, we're, we're using actually Azure. It's Microsoft Azure uh, Natural Language Search. Um, it has the Microsoft Cognitive Services uh, built into that uh, as well. Um, and really what that does is it understands language as it's written, right? It's natural language. It understands the intent of what those words mean uh, when strung together, and it's able to, to forgive and interpret the spelling errors or one word may really mean another word, that kind of a thing. Um, so very, very powerful. We've had just huge success uh, since we implemented Azure Natural Language Search uh, and great feedback from our you know, from our global client base on just the accuracy of that engine. Yeah, but it is Microsoft Azure. Okay, and then how well does the MAP integration support KCS? Uh, yeah, it's actually uh, KCS version six. Uh, when we did, went through the certification uh, to get uh, version six, 
um, certified, uh, we did that actually using the ShareWell integration. So the ShareWell was the ticketing side of it. We were the knowledge base side and and uh, it's fully KCS version six compliant. So uh, uh, if you're a KCS shop today or if you're uh, looking at uh, pursuing KCS down downstream, uh, you know, it's fully KCS v6 compliant. Well, I think that that kind of makes sense to move into this next question then and so how much does that, the, sorry. Yeah. I was going to say I no. wanted to expand on something uh, what Brent was talking about. When you're looking at some of the KCS practices, so your AQI and your other practices, those are actually built into Comround um, to manage the KCS practices as it relates to managing the articles. So um, the, 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 the map itself provides the integration for the lookups and the searching, um, and even from Comaround's perspective, uh, for those of you that are familiar with the, the Sharewell uh, knowledge search in the portal, if they say, this didn't solve my problem, it can also create incidents within Sharewell as well. That integration goes pretty deep. Um, but the KCS portion of those practices would act, can actually be managed within Comround itself. At least that's what we do. So let's go, up. go ahead with the next question. Oh, thank you. Thank you, Mike. Um, so the next question that did come in was how much does the MAP cost? Yeah, so oh, the MAP itself <clears throat> is available uh, you know, on the ShareWell site. Uh, so the map itself is free, essentially, uh, but it does require licensing of Comaround to plug in, right, to hook the two together and to provide access to all of our knowledge management authoring capabilities and reporting and search and all those things. And the way that Comaround uh, prices for ShareWell is we map pretty much identically to Sharewell's pricing methodology. It's concurrent licenses. It's only agents, right? There is no like uh, maintenance fees or hosting fees or any of that. There's no charge for uh, portal use or self-service use. So it's really just one-to-one -one licensing uh, for knowledge workers to your Sharewell licenses uh, on a concurrent basis. Okay, well that was um, the end or the last question that we did have come in. So I was just gonna invite Mike if you had any closing comments and then um, Brent, if you have any closing comments after that. Th thank you to Brent for uh, uh, sharing uh, your fount of knowledge with us. Uh, uh, thank you to Tabitha for organizing everything and thank you to everyone who joined us. Um, uh, the, you know, these are, are, are great sessions to increase all of our knowledge and capabilities uh, in the ESM space. Yeah, and thanks, Mike. And, um, you know, I think, um, you know, through these types of webinars, we can touch on a lot of topics, but we really don't have the opportunity to drill deep uh, into the map. And like Mike was saying, it just does so many things. There's just a lot of functionality uh, that's been built into that map, uh, you know, and so, for anybody that would like to get a demonstration, you know, of the map, um, uh, we can certainly line that up. You know, please um, feel free to reach out to Tabitha or to myself, uh, and we can walk through a demonstration and really talk to the specifics of your organization, uh, certainly in how you're using knowledge or how you would like to use knowledge. So if that offer extends out to everybody, just please let us know. Um, I think also too, you know, uh, if any other questions come up, so after the webinar here, if you think, oh, I wish I would have asked this or that, just please feel free to send them to either Tabitha or I. Uh, we'll be happy to get back to you, answer those questions, and, and get you the information that you're looking for. But uh, uh, I guess lastly, I just wanted to say thank you, everyone, for taking the time uh, to attend the webinar. I know, uh, you know, your days and your your time is very valuable and. I hope we provided uh, uh, some value to you, you know, through the information that, that we that we talked through here today. Um, so with that, I'll turn it back over to Tabitha. But thank you all so much for your time. Yeah, thank you. And so just one last comment is that the follow-up email, including the recording of this webinar, if you want to share it with your team or anyone else, will be sent in an email tomorrow afternoon. And with that, I just wanted to thank you all for joining us, and we will talk soon. Thank you. Great, thank you.